Tom Gilmore, visionary leader, a man of deep conviction and integrity, a true conservation hero in our garden state. You know, Tom, to me, Tom is one of, is really the preeminent leader in the, in the environmental community here in New Jersey. And, and you know, the reasons are, are, are pretty clear. I mean, he's a very thoughtful person and he has a lot of integrity and he's a person who spends the time getting to know other people, even the people he disagrees with. Uh, I guess on some level, I'm, you know, Tom is like, I can talk to him peer to peer. And because he runs the Audubon Society, and he's run it so well, and that I can learn so much from him. One of the great things about working with Tom Gilmore is that Tom is the kind of person who really has a long-term vision for what should happen and how to get there. And is, he's really not deterred by short-term setbacks. When Tom first came to New Jersey Audubon in 1983, he almost immediately took on a challenge that would define the next 28 years of his presidency. The protection of New Jersey's wetlands, some of the most biologically significant habitats on our planet. Back in the uh, early 80s, uh, we realized that the federal wetlands program wasn't, very, wasn't working very well. Uh, wetlands were just being filled and, and disturbed uh, all over the state. The federal program didn't even do a very good job of saving the wetlands and it did nothing to save the areas around the wetlands. And that was a point that Tom really emphasized during the campaign. We worked for, very closely with uh, former Assemblywoman Maureen Ogden. And uh, we would go down to Trenton and be lobbying in Trenton uh, back, in the, back in the days, back in the 80s. Working closely with leaders throughout the environmental community, with local citizen activists, and with the New Jersey legislature, Tom helped craft a bill that would not only protect our wetlands, but would also save the critical habitat lands directly surrounding them. It was Tom, with his knowledge, um, that really, I've always felt, carried the day, because the other two people on the other side didn't have any knowledge of you know, what, whether it would be in, you know, very valuable or not in terms of a buffer. Together, conservation champions from all sectors of the state played a role in ushering in the strongest wetlands protection law in our nation, New Jersey's Freshwater Wetlands Protection Act. It was a phenomenal victory because, you know, we now can appreciate that wetlands are some of the most vital habitats we have and serve as, you know, nurseries and uh, just very, very valuable places. Victory for New Jersey's wetlands closed one chapter in New Jersey Audubon's conservation story. But a new chapter was already being written. New Jersey's highlands contain a wide variety of habitats for fish, birds, and other wildlife. They also harbor the drinking water for more than five million people, half of New Jersey's population. During the development boom of the 1980s, pressure increased on all New Jersey open lands. The nearly 860,000 acres that comprise the highlands, including sensitive watershed and habitat lands, were especially at risk. We were losing literally thousands of acres each year, I think it was 5,000 a clip, uh, and as that natural aquifer went away, we would have been spending billions and billions of dollars, literally so, uh, over the next 50 years just to provide clean water. We started talking and we realized we needed to build a coalition in New Jersey to work on the highlands, and so, you know, Tom really uh, was the catalyst behind that and uh, helped uh, bring the different groups together to really start work on the highlands. Support throughout the conservation community grew and organizations and grassroots activists united to protect the vast natural, agricultural, and historic treasures of the region. In 1988, a Highlands Coalition was formed, and Tom Gilmore was chosen to serve as its first president. Um, and so it was really mu very much of a partnership. And over time, we built enough of grassroots support and made the case uh, to get that Highlands uh, Water Protection and Planning Act finally signed by the governor. Uh, it was just a huge accomplishment and, and very much of a joint effort between 
not just New Jersey Audubon and NJCF, but the Sierra Club and you know, on and on, so many other conservation groups that we were able to bring along to, to make that happen. While the Highlands Conservation was taking place in the northern part of our state, Tom's leadership was also called upon for an ongoing challenge occurring along New Jersey's southwest coast, the protection of an ancient species and the extraordinary natural phenomenon that has evolved in concert with it. Every spring, like clockwork, thousands of horseshoe crabs come ashore on Delaware Bay to mate and lay their eggs just as red knots and other long-distance migratory shorebirds arrive from their South American wintering grounds to feast on the abundant food source. But disaster was looming for this fragile balance of nature. By the late 1980s, over-harvesting of the crabs for bait and the resulting reduction in crab eggs was causing a rapid decline in shorebird populations. The population was being eradicated and their very important role in the life cycle was disrupting again the aviary patterns of the uh, of the wildlife and particularly the red knot you know making its uh, way from uh, hardy fit, uh, bird that it is from way south america to way north america as the ecology of delaware bay teetered at the brink of collapse new jersey audubon its coalition partners and state legislative champions like assemblyman john mckeon brought a greater sense of urgency to our Halt the Harvest campaign. By the spring of 2008, the New Jersey legislature overwhelmingly passed a bill to stop the harvest of horseshoe crabs and save the red knots and other shorebirds from extinction, culminating a conservation victory that was nearly three decades in the making. And in 2012, after years of continued advocacy, the red knot was finally listed as an endangered species in the state of New Jersey. New Jersey voters have persistently demonstrated their support for open space preservation. And in 1998, they approved the largest land acquisition program in state history, the Garden State Preservation Trust. All the Green Acres Bond Acts up till then always ran out after a year or two or three years. So you'd take what money you had, you'd throw it at a couple of projects, and then the money would run out. And we'd lobby like crazy to try to get some more money. But you couldn't plan, you couldn't put together long-term programs, uh, and you couldn't put together bigger picture types of acquisitions. The Garden State Preservation Trust changed all that. A Governor's Council on New Jersey Outdoors was appointed to assess the open space needs of the state and to determine a way of funding the acquisition of these natural areas. Uh, when the Governor's Open Space uh, Task Force, or what was called back then, wanted to just talk about having New Jersey save a million acres total when we had about 800,000 acres preserved, you know, Tom led the challenge uh, to say, no, we need a million new acres. And Tom and I and some other members of the uh, Governor's Council met with the, the governor in her conference room and, uh, you know, made the presentation from what the people had said at our hearings. And the governor was immediately enthusiastic about the million acres. And I remember looking at Tom, and he was just kind of, uh, he was really amazed. I mean, he was thrilled, but he was kind of amazed that, that she would uh, buy into it so wholeheartedly. Funding for the program ran out after eight years with nearly one quarter of a million acres preserved. But Tom continued his million acre goal through the Keep It Green Coalition, serving as the first chair of this 140 member organization. Uh, Tom was, was really a leader in putting together the Keep It Green Coalition and bringing this diverse group uh, of environmental organizations and community organizations and farming and hunting organizations all together uh, to focus on how we were going to get a new funding source put together. Uh, but it wasn't just a slam dunk. It wasn't so easy to get everybody together. But it really took somebody who everybody respected, like Tom, um, to pull this together to make it happen. 
Having achieved one of the nation's best funded land acquisition programs, the Garden State Preservation Trust, and continued preservation through the Keep It Green Coalition, it was time to focus on what becomes of undeveloped lands after they're preserved. Um, on the stewardship side, uh, now that we're you know, one of the number one states in the country in terms of how much land that's, that has been preserved and of course so much more to preserve, uh, we really need to come together and find ways to take care of this land in a way that maintains its biodiversity and it maintains quality public access and encourages people to really love the land. Today, you'll find New Jersey Audubon staff and volunteers working on farms, in forests, on corporate campuses, in state parks, and in wildlife refuges. Maintaining and enhancing the landscape for native species or helping other people to do so. Thanks to an historic partnership between New Jersey Audubon and local farmers, a direct farm-to-market link has been established that offers locally grown and manufactured products that are economically and ecologically sustainable. We've worked with Audubon for uh, uh, quite some time now in expanding the Jersey Grown moniker, uh, where we've had a number of projects uh, around the state uh, to grow uh, sunflower seeds which obviously in the Audubon Society, they love the feeding the birds, but the, it also has a dual purpose because it helps our farmers uh, in terms of something that they can grow as a, as a crop. It's been really successful, and um, uh, we're, you know, we, we've now doubled, with the role of the Audubon Society, doubled those that are growing uh, sunflower seed as a cash crop. So reaching out to those landowners and encouraging a stewardship ethic is a phenomenal accomplishment. Tom is one of the key people who has done that consistently over the last 20 years. Tom Gilmore has always understood the importance of educational outreach, that we must first learn to care about our natural world before we endeavor to protect it. I think one of the most important things that Tom has done with New Jersey Audubon and New Jersey Audubon has done is to bring wildlife to the people. Providing opportunities for all New Jersey residents to discover and experience the treasures of our natural world is New Jersey Audubon's ongoing vision. I believe that we will only preserve our biodiversity when everybody in New Jersey can see that biodiversity, can appreciate that biodiversity, and can go to places like the centers, like the New Jersey Audubon centers, to get in touch with that biodiversity through informed educational staff. And I think that model is a very, very good one. So the challenge going forward is to continue to protect and preserve what we already have protected and preserved. And it's an ongoing, very much an ongoing, continued uh, need. And the only way I think it's looking 100 years down the line to ensure that these lands stay preserved is to do what New Jersey Audubon is doing, is to educate people and get them out onto these properties, and into these lands, into nature, so they understand and appreciate, have the respect, and will continue to love and defend the land. Tom Gilmore has served New Jersey Audubon for one quarter of its existence. Through his vision and leadership, he leaves New Jersey Audubon and the state of New Jersey transformed. Conservation will continue to be grounded in science, immersed in understanding, and achieved through courage, perseverance, and humility. This is Tom's legacy. Uh, you know, I always like to think, and Tom Gilmore, in fact, taught me this, that, uh, you know, in everybody's heart, they do and want to leave a good legacy and, and do the right thing by their own children and grandchildren. And so, you know, learning through him, you're able to kind of reach out to your adversaries, if you will, to try to see if you can strike an area of, uh, of commonality. We need strong voices, and I know that Eric Stiles, you couldn't have a better successor to Tom than Eric. Um, they're going to continue, and, and we're all thankful for that, of, of making sure that people deal with the issues on a scientific basis, on a policy basis. Um, to have the integrity to not just worry about where your own organization's funding co is coming from, but looking at a statewide perspective. And nobody's done a better job in New Jersey Audubon than New Jersey Audubon in moving big ideas and tough ideas forward. 
you know, what I'd like to say to Tom in closing is uh, the birds in New Jersey, and the birders of New Jersey owe you a lot, Tom, but now it's time to go fishing.